This is the Pixel Fold. In today's real day in life review, we're gonna be going throughout the day, testing out the brand new camera setup, all five of them, the displays, and then also tracking the battery life throughout the day. It's a little bit less than the Pixel 7 Pro and it's powering a much brighter and bigger display. We'll see how that fares. Full of course. I've never had a harder to open straw in my life. Outside selfie camera. Always good. The only other foldable on the market for really the US that fits this niche is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. They're both priced at like the $1,800 price anchor, which is insane and very expensive for most people. But I think that the reason why I'm so excited about this phone is that it's the culmination of so much hard work and innovation and in making a display foldable in hinge technology and in Google software. The phone has this five times like dedicated telephoto lens. This is a trend that we're seeing in the smartphone industry. I think that when you're creating a smartphone, you have to kind of think about the features that consumers will notice immediately when they unbox the phone. So what are those features? Those are like the display, which this phone has a very bright display. We'll get back to the display in a second. Another feature that people notice right away is the camera. Like you pop open the camera app and you're like, ooh, looks good. Or, oh God, like what is going on? So the zoom is awesome because you immediately hit the 5X button. It's like visual, it's right there. And then you can see that the camera camera quality is so crisp and that's because it's that dedicated lens and in the past pixels have really struggled with not having great zoom they've used software to kind of compensate but now because the phone is so much more expensive and this is like the ultra premium device I feel like they kind of need it this cafe here is a cafe where they basically have a bunch of dogs I feel like that is so sick we sh maybe should go in like spontaneously have you been here before do you like dogs Oh my god, it's so cute. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. Hello. This one's so cute. Okay, another really interesting thing that I'm noticing here is that certain apps are definitely not optimized for the form factor. So this is Twitter, for example. So on the outer display, this would look totally normal, functions as a normal Twitter app. But then if you open it, on the inner display, you have the black bars on both ends. And if you rotate it, then it works well. So that is kind of an issue with foldables in general, optimization. Google has really gone to optimize a lot of their apps. So like the calendar app is really well optimized, for example, but then certain other like third-party apps aren't. 12.51 PM, the phone is at 87%. Uh, I don't know what it's doing, but it feels like almost like your face is too well lit. Yes, okay, so it does have like this computational photography thing where Google is constantly using like AI and image processing to make the shots a little better. Um, so like... It looks like not real. This is a common thing that people say, like what is the delineation between like making it the best possible and then also making it like real life? Because if you start to edit so much to the point that it's not real life, some people have an issue with that. <laughs> out of the subway and it's raining again. So I'm putting on this rain jacket that I got when I was in Austin. The embargo for the Pixel Fold just released. So we're now getting everyone's take. And something that everyone noticed that I also noticed, and I actually think it's kind of important, is the fact that when you unfold this phone, it doesn't unfold completely flat. It's like one or two degrees off. I feel like I wanna like push it a little bit, but then obviously it feels like if you push it too far, you would like crack it in half, but it is not entirely flat and that's more noticeable from certain viewing angles but I also just think that when you're holding the phone like vertically like this you notice it because your finger constantly goes over the crease. I think my favorite day in life or one of my favorite day in life is the iPhone 14 review and I think a huge reason why is because it was raining the whole video and I was just like getting stoked in the casual magic of the rain because it immediately feels like a main character moment. iPhone just has such natural like color tone. Zach and I were just saying the pixel fold like kind of does what a lot of people would say not to do. Cranking up the saturation a lot. But my question for you is like, do you like video footage that looks super saturated? Because I definitely feel like there are a lot of people out there that really like that saturated look because it feels like alive and bright and colorful. But I think it's easier to take neutral video and then saturate it versus take saturated video and then bring it back. I do think that the form factor of this makes so much more sense over the Samsung Fold. Like it just feels much more like a normal phone. The Samsung Fold, I love that phone too, but it's so vertical that the, the display is very, very narrow. On this phone, it almost feels like a regular phone. You can kind of forget about it. And then when you unfold it, you remember that it has this two-in-one form factor and this fits right in. 
really well. It is 2.33 p.m. Phone is at 78%. A lot of people online have been talking about the thicker bezel around the display. And I feel like with any device, there's always like the one design feature that is like memed a lot online. And then when you're actually using the device, I feel like most of the time it ends up being less important. Certain devices that we've reviewed on this channel have been tragic. Like the Apple Pencil that plugged into the bottom of the iPad was a terrible design choice. On here, I don't think that the extra bezel actually matters. And what it enables is the camera to be not an under display camera. So comparison to the Fold 4, that's a big difference. The Fold 4's inner camera is not great because it has to use a lot of technology to basically see through the pixels on the screen to have a clear image. I would love if the camera were more centered because when you're shooting video footage, it is a little bit rough to like where to look. You have to be super intentional. The other things that make this a great media consumption device are the speakers. The speakers are pretty great. And the software, it feels really fast. It's Google's Tensor chip and their latest stock Android. So I feel like one of the main selling points of this phone is the fact that if you want a foldable in the US and you want a pixel version of that, you would get this phone. It is 6.48 PM. I've been sitting in front of this desk doing a lot of editing, which is my pretty typical day with um, the YouTube videos. I think that this is one of the most exciting phones that Google has come out with recently because it's weirdly actually the culmination of a lot of Samsung's work with them on the Fold 4 and kind of learning from Samsung's mistakes and also wins with that phone about what really worked well and then putting the pixel spin on it. The form factor just makes a lot more sense in terms of the front display. It's my favorite cover display on any foldable. I think that the camera is a little bit worse than the Pixel flagship and I think the battery life is not ideal. It's definitely not an all-day phone if you really are intense with it and you're using the inner display a lot. Like for today, I use the cover display a lot but if you use the inner screen more, then the battery will drain at a faster rate. For the enthusiast that wants a foldable Pixel, they'll be excited for it. But honestly, this just makes me more excited for Gen 2. So if you have $1,800 to spend and you really want a foldable phone, I think that this is a great option. But if you're just excited and it's just in tech and you want to hang out and learn about it, then that's what this video is for. Thank you for spending today with me and I will see you next week, hopefully.